Okay, we might leave it there and move on to the next presentation. Uh, so thank you very much for those questions, but I'm sure they'll come up again when we hear from the Kinship Care panel this afternoon. Um, so I'd very much like to welcome Candice Butler. Uh, to do, oh, there we go, Candice. Um, to our next presentation. And uh, Candice is from the Queensland Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Child Protection Peak. So welcome to Candice. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, we're very fortunate to be in Queensland and to all be able to come together and, you know, have a yarn about, you know, that importance of kinship care and why, why it is so um, not only important, but why it is something that, you know, can really touch our hearts as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Um, so, as Lindsay said, my name is Candice Butler and I am the Director of Innovation and Practice Development with Quatsip, so the Queensland Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Child Protection Peak. I just had a laugh before about Lindsay saying about acronyms. We do say Quatsip, but then, you know, some days we'll shorten it to even CPP. Um, so, you know, it's just really mindful of acronyms. Um, so today I am going to speak to um, the process of the development of a family caring for family model um, and just talk you through, you know, the importance of that model, how we developed that model and also, you know, some of the key things that we're hearing from our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community control sector. Thanks, Tom. Um, so I acknowledge the traditional custodians whose lands we walk, talk and do business. I acknowledge and pay respects to the many elders, past and present, who have tirelessly paved the way for me, guided me and given me strength to draw on knowledge, systems of growing up children and their connection to family, community, country and culture. So who am I? I said at the start, my name is Candice but I am also a very proud Aboriginal woman with strong links to Yarraba in far north Queensland. So shout out to anyone who's online um, joining us from far north Queensland. I am a bit biased to that area, so I'm just going to say that up front. Um, and, you know, I'm very, very fortunate to um, have such a strong culture but also a strong family um, around me. I just chose to use this um, statement on this slide because... I know 100% that my team at Quatsip and the entire Quatsip um, team and membership, you know, we can safely say that we ensure that at all times self-determination is at the forefront of the work that we do. We always sit, we always listen, and we always make sure that we feed back and make sure that the voice of our community and our sector is genuinely being heard. Thanks, Tom. Um, so a little bit about Quatsip for those in the room who don't really know much about us. We um, do a lot of promotion and advocacy for the rights, safety and well-being of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children, young people, communities and their families. And we do this through um, the provision of training, of policy development, of program development and also working alongside our um, departmental colleagues to really push for those changes that, you know, that are needed for um our, for our mob. Our membership, um, we're sitting at about 35 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community controlled organisations and that ranges um, all the way up to the Torres Strait. Um, so it's, it's always a rock, paper, scissors off between us and the office when we are planning a trip up to the Torres Strait um, you know, because it's such a beautiful area up there. And I must say too as well that um, this model in particular is informed by um, Torres Strait Islander um, kinship structures. However, I myself as an um, Aboriginal woman can't speak on behalf of Torres Strait Islander kinship structures. So um, just wanted to you know, put that at the outset. Um, yeah, we just wanna ensure at all times that everyone feels respected and is given and have access to culturally safe and secure service provision. Hopefully the video will work for me. Bye. 
My name is Olivia Arling. I'm 14 years old from Tarshai Island. My name's Joshua McCrell Sydney Johnson. I'm from Anala, Queensland, and my mob's over in Sturdy. My name's Tiana Patterson, and I don't know where I'm from yet, but I'm still learning where I'm from. I'm Ricky Kay, I'm 15, I'm from Red Desert, up in the mountains, and my own daily mob. And my name's Amalia and I'm 10 from Coast Islander. My name's Kira Howard, I'm 11. When I grow up, I want to be a vet and inventor. I want to make new machines to help people through their life. A principal at the school. I would like to be a footy player for the Broncos. It means hope and respect because it tells me who I am. We will help each other out, respect each other. That's where I get to learn stories. A Brazil and Islander dancing, learning how to be the animals. We wanted our kids to gel together. We wanted our children to know who they were, who their families were, and who they were related to. You can face anything if you know who you are, you know. Because they know more than what, what I do, and I'm still yet learning from them. Like culture and respect. To respect them, the food they teach you where to go and not to go, and they tell you new things. Dreams, time stories. More knowledge to learn about, to give the last younger generations. To get respect, you need to give it to people. They're nice, they take me out places and um, they care. I feel secure and happy. I feel safe when I'm at home, when I'm happy and calm. I feel protected. When I feel safe, I feel happy and protected. Being happy together. My pops, my nans, and yeah. Um, they take me places, they care for me, and we have lots of fun together. Family, friends. Yeah. I feel safe at home and school. I feel comfortable, and I know that there's people looking after me. People who make me smile. People who I care about, like my family. So we filmed um, that video way back in 2016 and um, the reason why I still show it to this day is because it had so much influence on me when I um, first started at Quatsip but also in terms of really ensuring that the voice of our children and our young people is not far behind the voice of also our adults and our elders in the community too as well because they are our future elders and they are our, um, our future role models for them, their children and their children's children. One of the other really important reasons that um, you know I feel such a strong connection to this kinship care model is um, I was trying to do the math before, but I'm not not very good with math. I think that's why I'm a social worker. Um, <laughs> but you know my um, my cousins we range in age from um, one who's yeah, a year older than my mum, so 59, and our youngest is 16. So um, with the exception of about four of us in that, um, that line, you know, um, 
probably about four or five of us that haven't had children, but those that have, I know 100% lean on, you know, all of us to help in some way to grow their children, to ensure that their children are connected to kin, to ensure that they know who we are when we're stepping foot into Yarraba and who, um, why we have such strong connections. And I suppose that was one of the main reasons why, you know, I really wanted to sit with, sit with my membership, sit with my colleagues who um, you know do the day-to-day -day work of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander kinship care to really hear from them you know we have really um, really fantastic opportunity to really change the way kinship care and uh, specifically for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children is um, is delivered here in Queensland. So a um, bit of background to, to the model is that, you know, we were very fortunate with the Family Matters Forum where that video was showed that we did develop the Our Way, a generational strategy for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children and families. We've had a lot of um, support from our Queensland First Children and Families Board, who are a group of um, really well-respected Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community um, members. And um, so they've really assisted in developing this model. And also um, prior to that, we had a Aboriginal kinship care position statement where we sat with our membership and we said, because we do have such an opportunity to develop something that is really innovative, let's have a think, you know, do we wanna, um, do we wanna work with what we currently have? Um, do we wanna, you know, that was option one. Option two was, you know, do we work 50-50? So we work, you know, with what we, what we currently have and, you know, being a bit innovative. And our final option was, have the opportunity to really be innovative, really have a discussion about, you know, ways forward for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander kinship care. And um, not surprisingly, um, we all, you know, agreed that it's a real opportunity for us to be innovative and for us to, you know, really, you know, unpack the system and be, you know, this is, this is what, um, it's also what we do best, I, I would like to say. Um, as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in terms of, you know, that we know who our mob are, we know who, um, you know, and you think about safety, we know who the safe people are within our families and we know, you know, it's sometimes it's unspoken, but we know those, um, we know about that importance of safety and risk to our young people. So that's kind of how um, the background was, um, came about for this paper. So as I said, you know, in, it's really important for me to really emphasise that this model is not a Quatset product. It's actually a product that's come from the sector, developed by the sector. So it's something that, you know, we really, um, that I made sure I really listened to and um, to, to develop um, alongside them this model. So it really does look at a new approach for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, kinship care within Queensland. It's really about that importance of children being raised by family in community with connections to family, culture and country. It's also about recognising that really important fact that, you know, the cultural authority for our children lies with with us as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. We, um, you know, I would never um, impose my cultural authority onto another Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander person because that's not my space. But when it comes to my family, I know that there is expectations and very high expectations, um, you know, that I have that um, cultural authority and that I am speaking my truth at all times. Um, it, it helps, this program also looks at not only um, children that are subject to, um, you know, child protection orders, but we're really trying to look at a way in the, in the future about how we can embed this program for, for our families who are putting their hands up and, um, you know, being kin, stepping forward and being kin carers. Just take a little bit of a step back. I don't think I, um, you know, said it at the beginning. The reason why we chose the title Family Caring for Family is because um, a lot of the feedback that I was getting from the sector is that the term kinship was a term that was 
imposed on us as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And that would, that is a way that we would never have, you know, spoken about. It would be, it's family. You know, that's my mob. That's my auntie. That's my cousin. You know, it's never, oh, that's my kinship carer. You know, it's actually, this is who, um, who I'm living with, you know, this is who, um, who feeds me, who gives, you know, so it was never, um, a term from what I heard from the sector. They wanted something that really captured that importance of family, you know, looking after mob. So we came up with family caring for family. Just really quickly, like in relation to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander child placement principle, I won't spend too much time on this, but you know, the reason why, um, having this program is so important is because you know when we look at that reclaiming and um redefining kinship care to it it was something that meredith spoke about in terms of you know that definition of kin we've lost the true definition of kin over time and so this this program is hopefully um you know and i i believe we will be able to really reclaim and redefine um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander kinship care, but also, you know, that kinship care for all um, of our kin carers who are stepping up. Um, we always, as I said, with the partnerships, it's super important that, um, you know, we were guided by our sector and that when we heard from them, one of the really key things was that, you know, as if, if a child does need to be placed in out-of-home care, then that child's first placement should be made in consultation with the, with the child, if age appropriate, with the parents, as well as with the extended family members. And it was something that Meredith said too as well about that slowing down of the process. You know, we really should be taking our time to identify those family members, to identify, um, you know, who, who is coming forward and who is um, caring for, um, putting their hands up to care for our, um, for our little ease. And um, I know it goes without saying for those within this room, but, you know, it's super important that the reason why this, um, I believe this family caring for family program is going to be so um, successful is because it will be about ensuring children are being raised and supported by their family and their connections to kin, community, family and culture will just come naturally. You know, it'll be something that a child and young person, once they turn 18, 21, will be able to be like, you know what, I know who my mob are. I know who I'm connected to. We heard on the video one of the um, Lily say, you know, she's, she doesn't know um, where she's from yet, but I loved how she added yet. You know, she too is on her own journey and she, she is really connected to her family, but, you know, she still knows that, we're all on a continuous journey to find out who we are and to find out our connections. Um, so one of the um, really important things about this model is that they, the model does allow for it to be adapted to the local context. So, um, you know, there's no, you, know, you must do this, you must do that. It actually allows it to be really flexible and to be delivered in a way that does meet the needs of um, individual uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander families too. It's really important that these services are designed and delivered by um, the local Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community controlled organisations, but as well as having those really key people in the room too as well to have those discussions about, okay, well, what, what does this look like? What, how can we ensure that our, um, our families are getting the correct support that they need? And what is it? Like, you know, some may just may need a bigger car. Some may need, you know, uh, um, access to mattresses. Some may need more intensive support, but it's just allowing that to, to happen. Um, it's really important that, you know, that we don't forget that in terms of that, um, Although we are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community controlled organisations and we are all you know, working to support our, our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children, families, communities, that we all have little um, adjustments. You know, we all do things just a little bit differently, but we all um, have the same principles. We're all um, you know, guided by the same values. So this model just really does allow for that, as the slide suggests, you know, that adjustments for local context. 
So these are, I'm not sure if um, you can see the slide very well. Um, obviously I love a good diagram and I love colour. Um, so, you know, I'm, sure, I'm more than happy for these slides to be provided to everyone um, at the end of the day. The overview of the program, some, these were four key phases that we heard really strongly. So it was about that importance of allowing the, whether it be the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community controlled organisation that has is in receipt of the funding for um, foster and kinship care, or it's even working alongside the family participation program to really do that really genuine finding and mapping of a child's extended family. So using processes such as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander family led decision making, where everyone um, you know, comes together surrounds that family with support and really identifies, okay, well, who is best placed at this time to help look after um, this child or young person? What do we need to support this to be a, um, you know, a, a stable placement for this um, child and young person? The next phase is really, really about um, assessing and matching. So not just not just um, assessing, you know, the kin carer, but also assessing. Well, what is it that that actually this family does need to support this child? You know, what is it? You know, what can we what can we provide as a service? But also, what what do we need to outsource? You know, what who else do we need to bring along? You know, is it a family well being service? Is it a um, you know intensive family support service? You know, who else needs to be around and um, involved in with this young person or child? The third one I, I touched on just um, you know a couple of minutes ago, but really ensuring that we're setting up our families for um, you know for success, and also ensuring that not only setting them up for success, but setting them up to ensure that our children and young people are getting the best of what they um, you know what they deserve. So it's about, um, you know, making sure that there is that tailored casework available within this model, um, making sure that we do have those wraparound supports for um, children and family members. The final one is, um, which I really, really like, is thriving. So when we do have really quality, um, you know, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, placements with, um, with kin, and with um, in country, you know, we know our children are going to strive, and we know that they're going to not only strive, but they're also going to thrive. They'll be able to be um, to be the principals at the school, like what the young young one said. They'll be able to, you know, I always love this one, but be the footy player for the Broncos. You know, like they they will be able to really thrive with this model. As I um, touched on earlier, I could not have done this without the support and um, expertise of my Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community controlled organisations. I also couldn't have done it without the um, support and guidance of um, Paul Testro and also Tracy Smith too as well, who really helped me to, um, to you know, put all these fantastic words into what what this model could look like um, it really was about co-design I don't use that word lightly it was really you know well what is it you know what should this model look like what how can we adapt it to be delivered in the local context we also need to ensure that there, um, you know, there is that ability for interface with other programs. So with programs like the Family Wellbeing Services, like our Intensive Family Support Services, um, like our Family Participation Program, that those, um, you know, that there's those clear um, links and opportunities for um, quality casework too as well. And that we need our, and it was something that, um, you know, Kate spoke to earlier that we, you know, we really need to have our funding funding models to be flexible and also, you know, supporting that, um, you know, and, and advocating for our funding models to be flexible and to allow for um, for these for this model, whatever it looks like in that different region, to be really unique and not to be driven by um, outputs more so, you know, what is the outcomes for this child and young person. I 
think just um, kind of in in closing, the one of the really key things that we're finding with a number of the projects that we've had the um, privilege with being involved in at Quatsip is just this importance of evaluation. And I know um, you know it's a it's a it can be a contentious. Um, topic, but we do need to ensure that we are like really looking at you know why are these programs working? Why why is it that you know our um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community control organisations do a really deadly job? You know, like so we really need to be ensuring that as part of this model too as well, we're evaluating. And I use the action research cycle of, you know, planning, acting, observing, reflecting. And it's something um and you know, I said earlier, evaluation has all different um terms, but it's actually something that good casework involves too as well. Good casework involves planning, good casework <coughs> involves action, it involves observing, and it involves reflecting. So if we can um, you know, just ensure that that's happening at all times, then that would be um, really fantastic. So that that's the model in, a, in, in 20 minutes. <laughs> any, any questions or comments? <laughs> Uh, yeah, if there's any questions on the floor, we will ask you to hold the mic this time because um, it will help people at home in their offices to hear if you're holding the mic and not down there, up there. Don't be shy. So any questions from the floor? Here we go. I'm not sure it's, it's, it's kind of a, a hard question, but I'm wondering if you can Springs, um, you know, as a child protection practitioner out there, and that was one of the really um, key key things that did help us, um, you know, ensure that the um, that the placement didn't didn't fail. Um, you know, it was about having um, you know graduated returns back to country. You know, like um, ensuring that that family felt supported, ensuring that the children felt, you know, felt supported too as well and that their needs were being really, um, really thought about too as well. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, completely agree with you. And it was um, something that, you know, did come through these um, consultations was that importance. Of, we need to also work alongside the family to do these, um, you know, for lack of a better word, those graduated returns. Otherwise, it'll, yeah, it's just like it's, it's not going to be helpful for anyone if we just yeah pick up the sweet you know like now they're you know with family that's awesome but no we really do need to do that work and um, you know work alongside family and and the services who have also built a relationship and a rapport with the children and young people too as well I think that's really important to acknowledge that relationship that you know um, children do can can have with their caseworkers 